Are you one of those people that's hopped on this e-cigarette craze and started vaping all the time? Well, if you are, I have some news that you might be interested in. Vaping has become really popular lately, especially as a vector for replacing cigarettes, to ultimately help people stop smoking and improve their lung health. Even though e-cigarette liquid contains some nicotine, it's a lot less nicotine than you would find in a typical cigarette. You would have to smoke really frequently out of your vape to ingest the same amount of nicotine in a typical day's worth of cigarettes, whatever that happens to be for you if you are a cigarette smoker and you're using vaping to try and quit. Cigarettes kill millions of people every year, so if people start taking up vaping, that number will drop significantly. However, this is not to say that vaping is perfectly healthy. Vaping is certainly healthier than smoking cigarettes, but it's not totally risk-free. Vape fluid still contains nicotine, and by vaping, you're still putting stuff in your lungs that isn't clean air, and this can still cause irritation and cancer. A new study from researchers in the UK and the US, but mostly researchers from the Birmingham Acute Care Research Group at the Institute of Inflammation and Aging in the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom, these researchers sought to examine how vape fluid affected the lungs. Specifically, they were trying to find out how vaping affected macrophages, or cells of the immune system that happen to be residing in the lungs' alveoli. What they found was that when the vape fluid was heated, vaporized, and then inhaled, the vapor itself irritated those macrophages and impaired their ability to go about doing immune system stuff. They were less effective at fighting off pathogens. They found that it didn't make a difference if the e-cigarette vapor had nicotine or if it was nicotine-free. It still irritated the macrophages, but the presence of nicotine just made the problems worse. The macrophages that were exposed to sublethal doses of the e-cigarette vapor saw a 50-fold increase in their production of reactive oxygen species, or oxygen radicals, which can steal electrons from other molecules and thus destabilize them. Higher concentrations of oxygen radicals are tightly associated with impaired cellular function, and when this happens across a tissue, you get tissue degradation. So you want to avoid having high concentrations of these oxygen radicals. But this e-cigarette vapor really stimulates the macrophages to start pumping them out. So that's, that's not good. Even more worrisome, the irritated macrophages would release more cytokines and more chemokines. These are small molecules that are used by the immune system to signal more immune cells to come to a site of infection and to stimulate them to fight off the pathogens. While cytokines and chemokines serve this useful function, they do have to be tightly regulated because they also cause tissue inflammation. And inflammation is really destructive in the long term and can lead to all manner of health complications. So if you're regularly vaping, you're regularly irritating your lung tissue and causing it to get inflamed. So stepping back and looking at all of this as a whole, when you inhale e-cigarette vapor, the macrophages in your lungs are really irritated by it, and they can't do their job as well, so your whole immune system is weakened. And this is especially bad because these are immune cells operating in your lungs. These are the first line of defense against germs that you breathe in. So if you make them weaker, any germs you breathe in are going to have an easier time infecting you. The irritated, impaired macrophages will also secrete an excessive amount of oxygen radicals and cytokines, and both of these together can cause a lot of damage and inflammation in the delicate tissue inside your lungs. So what's the takeaway here? What's, what's the lesson? What can we learn from this? If you're a cigarette smoker, consider using e-cigarettes to reduce your dependence on nicotine and to eventually quit smoking entirely. Now the critical thing here is that this means that you have to stop smoking e-cigarettes too. Now, if you've never smoked cigarettes, but you still vape, you still smoke e-cigarettes, consider using a vape fluid that doesn't have nicotine, because that'll be easier on your lungs than vape fluids that do have nicotine. But at the end of the day, you should really consider quitting the habit entirely. If you want to optimize the health of your lungs and avoid the long-term damage that comes from regular inflammation and irritation, then the only thing that you should be inhaling is fresh, clean air.